Is this person really thinking right? This person must be crazy. I can't believe my husband would say such a thing. I actually thought of a good idea. Even though I only earn $1,000 per month, I actually already have something that's perfect. Huh? What is it? It's our house. Come again? So, I'm saying it's our new house that we built recently. Excuse me? What the heck is he saying? Is he okay? Wait a minute. Are you being serious? Of course. I'm always serious. I'm sure that Kim would cry with joy and enjoy this as her present, for sure. How could I even allow you to give away our newly built house to your sister? Shut up. In any case, I'm giving our new house to my younger sister as a wedding present. It's a done deal. If you don't like it, then we'll get a divorce. At this point, something completely snapped inside me. Fine, I understand. Let's get a divorce. I can't keep on doing this with you anymore. My name is Stephanie. I am 33 years old and I work at a company. I have been married to my husband Sam, who is the same age as me for three years now. Sam and I are both working as company employees and living a nice and happy life. But there was one issue. And that was Sam's younger sister, Kim. Kim is four years younger than my husband and I, but she and my husband are very close, to the point that it seems to be going a little too far. You could say that Sam really loves Kim and is very protective of her, to the point that it feels like he's obsessive about his sister. When we were first married, Kim would visit us as almost every day, even when we were newlyweds. And there were times when Sam and I were supposed to be on a date. But then Kim would join, and all three of us would go out together. If this situation continued any longer, I honestly think divorce is the only choice. I had thought about it like that before, but at the time, Kim got transferred to a new job in a different place, so she stopped coming to visit us frequently. My husband looked very sad and said, Why don't we move to where Kim lives? When his sister first moved away, but hearing this, I felt like I almost wanted to hit him. After that, Kim and my husband would only see each other at Thanksgivings and other gatherings at Sam's parents' house. So from then on, my husband started to care about me more and our marriage was going well for a while. But our peaceful days would get ruined because of what would happen. It seems that Kim has come back here again. My husband was overjoyed and told me about it. Yay, I can hang out with Kim more again. I really can't wait to be with Kim. I was stunned, and even a little sickened by how Sam was being obsessive about Kim again, to the point of wondering if they were really siblings or not. And Kim didn't come back here just for a visit. She now has someone she is dating with the intention of getting married. She is currently living with that person and she says that it is difficult for her to make time to hang out with Sam. Well, that's not surprising. My husband was depressed when he found out, but in the end he said, Well, it's true. I have no right to interfere with Kim's love life. I was surprised since I didn't know Sam could say such decent thing about Kim, but later, when I thought about it calmly, I felt angry because when we were just married, Sam would bring Kim over to our house so many times that Sam and I had no time for each other at all. I felt like Sam treated Kim way better than me. I even started to feel a little jealous, and knowing how I felt jealous, I felt a little disgusted with myself. Still, I was glad that things didn't go back to the way they were before, after Kim came back. We have been talking about buying a new house, which we had planned to do since the beginning of our marriage, 
and I was afraid and a little concerned that Kim would ruin our plans. My husband seemed to have given the idea of getting the new house some thought, and we finally bought the house we had always wanted. It will take a few months to finish the house, since we had some parts custom made. Currently, we are living in a rented apartment, and we can wait there until it is completed. I was happy to finally have the home of my dreams. But then something unbelievable happened. My husband suddenly quit his job. Wh why? We have a mortgage to pay. No, no, it's not that I don't work at all, you know. I will work part-time during the weekends. Why did you even do that, though? Because if I only work during the weekdays, I won't be able to hang out freely with Kim, right? Excuse me? Did he hit his head really hard somewhere? I just think he's crazy to quit his job at this time when we have a mortgage to pay. And it's just common sense to talk to me about these things first, right? Quitting work so he can hang out with his little sister is a bit too much. Apparently, my husband quit his job so that he can spend even more time with Kim. And Kim is not working at the moment and her boyfriend is providing for the living expenses. She says that she will be a full-time housewife after she gets married, so she has decided that she doesn't need to work now. Well, I'm not so sure if I agree to that either, but more than anything else, my husband's behavior is just completely unbelievable. Why would he suddenly start doing something like that when we just got a newly built house? It seems that my husband does things which completely doesn't make sense when it comes to Kim. My husband seems to meet Kim frequently on weekdays and have fun with her. Plus, my husband loves to show off, so when he goes out to lunch with Kim, he would always treat her as her big brother. So, the money Sam earns on weekends is just gone in no time. Well, my husband earns only about $1,000, so it is only natural that it would run out if he spends money like that. Even though I suggested to my husband to get a full-time job again, he would not listen to me at all. I felt very uneasy and wondered if I would be able to live like this with him in the future. Then, my friend Janet told me an even more surprising truth. Janet told me that Sam had visited the car store where her husband worked. At that point, I was surprised. I wondered why Sam, who was poor, was trying to buy a car. When I asked Janet about the details, she told me that Sam was saying how his little sister was getting married soon and he wanted to buy her a car as a wedding gift. Then, Sam remembered that Janet's husband was a car dealer and that's why he visited the store. Janet's husband was very worried because my husband was only looking at high-end cars. No matter how much it was a wedding gift for Sam's precious sister, giving her a luxury car is just too much. I mean, what kind of siblings love each other like that? Janet's husband was worried if I had given Sam the proper permission to do so, and told Janet to contact me to make sure that I had been told about it. So instead of letting Sam make a decision right away, Janet's husband said, Let's think it over once and make a decision after. I am so grateful to Janet's husband. I had no idea that my husband was doing that behind my back. When I came home from work that day, I immediately questioned my husband angrily. Hey, what is the meaning of this? You're trying to buy a car for Kim's wedding present, aren't you? What? What the hell? How the hell did you find out about that? Because you went all the way to the store where Janet's husband works, right? Damn it! I went there because I thought I might be able to get a good deal since we're acquaintances, you know? Instead, he's a crappy dealer. 
He gave away a customer's personal information without permission. What are you talking about? He's a brilliant guy. He checked with me because he got worried about it. And for the record, you're crazy to think that you could even afford a car with your small salary. What are you talking about? My precious sister is getting married, you know. As her big brother, it's my duty to celebrate her with a huge present. I mean, before saying that, you better do your duty as a husband first. You don't work during the week and you don't do any house chores at all. And I mean, what's wrong with you? Quitting your job like that just so that you can hang out with Kim? That's just unbelievable. You're an only child. You wouldn't understand the bond between siblings. Well, even so, you being this obsessive about Kim is just abnormal. I don't need siblings to understand that. Huh? You're so rude. I just love and care for my sister. Why can't you understand that? Oh no. Talking like this won't solve anything. Anyway, I'm definitely not allowing you to buy Kim a car for her wedding present. You need to be more realistic about things. I'll tell Janet's husband never to sell you any cars. My husband and I had a huge fight like this and spent the next few days not talking to each other. I really can't forgive him for this time. If my husband continues to be like this about Kim, I will really have to consider leaving him. So this time, I will definitely wait for my husband to reflect and apologize. I will never break down. However, contrary to my thoughts, my husband made some unbelievable comments. One day, my husband told me he needed to talk to me, so we sat across from each other on the living room sofa. There was a moment of silence. I guess Sam could tell that I was really angry with him because I had not spoken at all. Then, my husband began to apologize and said, I'm sorry about the other day. I was out of line. I won't give Kim a car as her wedding present. I can't buy a new one now anyways. I was glad that he was sorry for what he said. Thank you for understanding. My husband is not able to make calm decisions when it comes to Kim, but this time he seems to have gotten himself together. I just hope he will start working as a full-time employee again. The next moment, while I was relieved, my husband opened his mouth and started to talk, saying, So, about the wedding gift to Kim... Oh yeah, what are we gonna give her then? If it's a wedding gift, I think it should be something that they can use, like dishes or like tablewares. No, 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 I'm not going to give her something that small. Actually, I've got an idea. My husband grins as he said that. Even though I only earn $1,000 per month, I actually already have something that's perfect. Huh? What is it? It's our house. Come again? So, I'm saying it's our new house that we built recently. Excuse me? We're giving Kim our new house. How about that? It's the biggest gift anyone could receive as a wedding present, right? I was speechless and in shock that I almost fainted. What the hell is he saying? Oh, wait a minute. Are you being serious? Of course. I'm always serious. I'm sure that Kim would cry with joy and enjoy this as her present for sure. I don't even know what to say to you anymore. You really are stupid. Stupid, huh? Of course, anyone would cry with happiness if they got a new house. How could I even allow you to give away our newly built house to your sister? I mean, what about the mortgage? Well, we'll figure it out. We'll pay it anyways. And you and Kim's husband can take care of the amount that I won't be able to pay for. You've got to be kidding me. I don't want to pay a mortgage for a house I won't live in. You are so selfish. Why don't you want to take care of my family that much? Well, I can't live up to your standards. 
Shut up. In any case, I'm giving our new house to my younger sister as a wedding present. It's a done deal. If you don't like it, then we'll get a divorce. At this point, something completely snapped inside me. So without a pause, I said this to my husband. Fine, I understand. Let's get a divorce. I can't keep on doing this with you anymore. With that, I immediately got out the divorce papers I had prepared. And I confronted them to my husband as I had already signed my part. My husband said, I don't need to stay married to someone who can't take care of my sister. And signed the divorce papers. I will never ever understand how this man thinks. I took the divorce papers which we both had filled out, packed my bags and decided to go home to my parents as fast as I could. On the way there, I filed the divorce papers at the city office and ended my marriage with my husband. I didn't expect our divorce to go that easy. It was a bit of a letdown, but I don't want to be pushed around by that man anymore. Fortunately, the house was purchased when my husband was still a full-time employee, so the mortgage on the house is also in his name. So I withdrew the money I had put in as my share of the property from our shared account and parted ways with my husband. After that, I was living peacefully by myself in an apartment. But about a month after the divorce, I suddenly received a phone call from my ex-husband. Stephanie, it's all my fault. I'm sorry. Please, come back. Huh? Why now? I mean, it's too late, you know. I'm in a lot of trouble. I can't handle it on my own. My ex-husband started blabbing on about what had happened since the divorce, even though I didn't ask him. Sam was going to give Kim our new house as a present and showed her the house. Kim was very happy, but when my ex-husband started talking about the mortgage, her mood immediately turned sour. It's not normal to give a house with a mortgage as a present, is it? There's no way that you can pay the mortgage for this amazing house all on your own when you're just working at a part-time job. I certainly won't allow my husband to pay for it. So, if that's what's going to happen, then we don't need a new house. So, it seems that Kim had refused to accept our newly built house. So, my ex-husband had no choice but to start living there by himself, but first of all, he could not pay the mortgage all on his own. But he couldn't really get a job at a company that paid him as much as he had been earning before. So he ended up working at a company with terrible working conditions with a really low income. And he had to work overtime and hardly spent any time at home, and most of his salary was used to pay off his mortgage. When he talked to a real estate agent about selling the house, the real estate agent said that they could only sell it at a price much lower than the purchased price, and even if Sam sold it, he would still be in debt for about $100,000. So Sam came up with the idea of getting back together with me and moving in together once again. You deserve what you got, you know. You're on your own. I said that and hung up the phone. I then blocked all incoming calls so that Sam couldn't get in touch with me at all. As for my ex-husband, according to our mutual friend, he apparently sold the house. He decided it was wiser to live in a cheap apartment and pay off his debts than to keep paying the mortgage. Well, I'll give him a credit for that decision. To be honest, it's almost hell either way, so in the end, Sam deserves what he got. On the other hand, I am living a nice, relaxed life and continuing to save money at a steady pace. I dream of continuing to live a steady life and someday buying my own dream home with my own money. It is so sickening that Sam prioritizes his sister over his wife. I mean, being obsessive about your own sister like that is too abnormal. And giving a house as a wedding gift to his sister is just too much. Normally, people would send something a little more casual. It's a good thing that Stephanie left this man. 
I hope she can meet a more wonderful man in the future. I hope Stephanie will lead a happy life. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.